We are here back in the Forex Day today with another guest of uh, this uh, Forex Day journey, intense journey, and uh, we are back with Ben Robson. He's um, um, 20 years in the market. Um, he was a Goldman Sachs uh, worker, but right now he runs, he owns company Spectrax Commodities. How do you pronounce it better? Spectrax Commodities. Spectrax Commodities. Uh, we would like to ask you about the current um, situation of the markets, especially uh, what is um, uh, the current market outlook for the region, for Europe yeah. nowadays. Um, how do you foresee the market changing within the year? Okay, well, it's a, it's a good opening question and thank you for asking it because there are a lot of factors that are, that are occurring in Europe that can move the markets and in particular the Euro. So if we take um, the UK, for example, Brexit. Had Brexit. Okay, so Brexit is not, in my opinion, particularly good for the pound. So there, there potentially is a trading opportunity of Euros against the pound. Okay, we have a, another interesting factor insofar as the US is starting to raise interest rates and the Europe is dragging its feet in this regard. So we see a disparity or a movement uh, in interest rates of US rates relative to Euro rates, which potentially makes uh, the dollar more attractive against the Euro. Mm -hmm. Okay, finally you have uh, political influences, you have uh, a political maverick and so far you have Mr. Trump in, uh, in America who seems to make enemies uh, with, uh, yeah. with his friends, G7 in particular. So that will also have an effect on Europe. So whether he imposes trade tariffs or sanctions, these are all factors that can, can um, move markets in Europe. How do I see this um, panning out for the rest of the year? Well, I think one of the good things that we have coming is the midterm elections in, uh, in, in, in November in, in the US. And this may be a period where Democrats and Republicans have an opportunity to, to rein in the president a little bit and to calm him down. So, so we uh, have to keep an eye. Yes, definitely keep an eye for November. But actually before November, you, you could expect some volatility. So you may, you may want to think about um, safer trades. And once again, Europe, we have a, something called the Swiss franc, where if people have uncertainty, they tend to trade Swiss francs. And today in June, um, are there any political factors uh, influencing the uh, foreign uh, exchange market sector uh, in this quarter? Well, I'd say the main political factors are definitely Brexit. Brexit? Uh, definitely... Uh, Maybe the, the nationalism in Europe? Nationalism in Europe, for sure. But, and Mr. Trump. I, I, I think that the world is really following his lead and reacting to his every move. So uh, those are the, the main drivers, I feel. Mm -hmm. Um, what is your outlook for global commodities uh, trading? Okay, well, I'll cover two commodities specifically. So my, my feeling is that the risk is underpriced in the market. And so when we look at various risk indicators like the VIX, uh, we see that it's relatively flat. Now, this is caused by and large by masses of computers that keep the markets relatively stable. Mm -hmm. So I think that the markets are underpricing risk. I think equity markets are extremely priced highly and I think there's a potential for them to, to, to correct. Okay, so if equity markets correct quickly, uh, that would tend uh, for the computer algorithms to withdraw their liquidity which can, move to can lead to spikes in the market. So therefore I would be keen to invest a small amount of my portfolio in gold and silver because I think these are safe haven trades. And also, uh, on, on, with respect to oil, I think we've had an instance where, where oil prices uh, came lower uh, at the end of last year, mm -hmm. but have been gradually spiking, or not spiking, but moving higher gradually. I think there's a, oil, oil tends to, in my opinion, will trade between about $50 and $70 a barrel, because you have all sorts of means of productions now that, that mean that, that I don't see it spiking up into the 110s, 120s as it was a few years back. Okay, and um, can you? Um, uh, what, what are your your view uh, on diversifying strategies uh, to help beat the markets? Okay, well, my opinion is that is that. So I wrote a book, Currency Kings, and that is all about winning. Okay, mm -hmm. and with respect to winning, 
I feel that if you have a competitive advantage, then you have a great chance of winning. Mm. In the absence of a competitive advantage, that is people who speculate without really uh, knowing that the strategy is a long-term winning strategy, then it's, it's actually probably a better strategy to diversify. So you can diversify into currencies, you can diversify into indices, you can diversify into commodities, but you, and you can divers, diversify into trading styles. So you may have a long-term trend following, you may have mean reversion, you may have a global macro policy, but to combine different strategies to diversify your risk is something I, I would uh, recommend so to traders. Yeah. I suppose this is your main tip for traders nowadays? Well, my main Diversify tip, Well, my main tip for traders is not to lose money. So that, that, that money. So part, of win, part of winning is not losing. So it goes back to competitive advantage. There are so many people who trade and they um, confuse luck with skill. So if you're lucky, then maybe you make money. But if you're unlucky, you'll wipe out. And the statistics are there to prove that people tend to lose more than they tend to win. Okay? So if you have, do not have a competitive advantage, my advice strongly is to diversify into different products and uh, different trading strategies. Mr. Robson, thank you very much for attending us. Thank you very much for speaking with us today. It was a pleasure. It's been a great pleasure for me too. Thank you so thank much. You very much.